Pakistan, home of the breathtaking Karakoram mountain range. A great diversity of culture and nature cover the country. But Pakistan is also known for terror and its contradictions. The four Austrian alpinists, Stefan, Martin, Andreas and Thomas, are on their way to a unique expedition. The car ride to their destination, Shimshal, is a very tough one. It takes four days from the capital, Islamabad. The warm welcome of the locals seems very familiar. No wonder Stefan and Andreas have already been here before. This is probably the most remote ski camp in the world, taking place 1,000 meters above Shimshal. Stefan and Andreas got invited to organize the camp. No chairlifts, no slopes, no infrastructure. But this is not important. <laughs> Girls and boys together enjoy their first turns at an altitude of 4,100 meters. Seeing girls participating in sports events is something unique. In Pakistan, many women are not allowed to go out of their houses. Therefore, it is ranked as the second worst country worldwide concerning gender equality. For Samina and Mirza Beg, the initiators, the ski camp is the beginning of a change, like Samina's story itself. As the first Pakistani, she achieved to climb the seven summits, including Mount Everest. Usually, uh, the parents didn't allow their kids, you know, especially women. But our family allowed her. She became a mountaineer. She has proven that everything is possible, especially for women. They believe that sport is the key to change. I'm here to encourage these girls that you can achieve your goals. Nothing is um, impossible, everything is possible when you hard work and you can achieve your goals. During the ski camp, Stefan and Andreas spotted the majestic Whitehorn. That's why they are back now in spring to realize their own mission. Very good. Together with Thomas and Martin, they want to do the first ascent and ski descent of the north face of Shimshal Whitehorn. The problem is that there hardly exists any information about the mountain. They don't even know if it is skiable at all. Therefore, they have to see the mountain themselves on a clear day. But since their arrival seven days ago, there is zero visibility. They have to acclimatize anyway, so they set out for the opposite valley, hoping to get a glimpse of the Whitehorn. The heavy snowfall is still blocking their view. What a surprise! It has cleared up. For the first time, the Austrian Alpinists can finally see the mighty peak. From this point of view, an ascent via the north face and a ski descent seem possible. 
it's time to acclimatize. <laughs> Everything works out as planned until that moment. After a sleepless night, Thomas sets off to explore the area. The rest of the team is worried, but they need to have their own impression of the current situation. Just a tiny impact was enough to trigger a huge avalanche. The team is afraid that if the snow conditions are similar at the Shimshol Whitehall now to what they saw, then this could be the end of their mission. The final decision can only be made standing right beneath the north face. Approaching the Whitehorn, they slowly realize the giant dimensions of the mountain. They know that they have to traverse a massive glacier maze, but no one has slightly imagined these dimensions. They have to find a safe way through the white maze. Any step could lead to a fatal fall. At the bottom of the Whitehorn, they have to face reality. Fractures at the surface, packed snow and seracs are alarming signs of danger. It is not possible to ascend and ski down the north face of the Shimshal Whitehorn. It is just too dangerous, and ice falls and avalanches would hit the Alpinists. Disappointment is in the air. But everyone knows that this was just the right decision.
the Austrians want to ski. In the last days, new possibilities already have occurred in their minds. They spotted a massive 800-meter couloir up to 50 degrees steepness at almost 6,000 meters sea level. To get there, they have to walk over 1,600 vertical meters from the base camp. In case they make this first ski descent, it would be the highest one of their lives. Due to better snow conditions, it seems skiable. The risk of avalanches still remains. Again, they have to fight their way through the glacier maze until the steep ascent begins. It is an act of strength and endurance. The additional weight of the skis on their back can be clearly felt. After every 20 steps, a break is necessary to recover briefly, over and over again. Time is running, but the top still seems far away. After an eight-hour ascent, the Austrians are completely exhausted at the highest point to the couloir of Thousand Gutters. <laughs> the view is overwhelming. Finally, they can do what they are here for, a couloir of up to 50 degrees and good conditions, a descent of superlatives. Every journey comes to an end. The great descent just next to the Whitehorn only has added the final touch to an unforgettable expedition. Ich glaube, die Bilder sagen eben mehr als tausend Worte. Es war einfach, es wäre eine Harakiri-Aktion gewesen. So wie im Angesicht von dem Berg eine 800 Meter lange Rinne zu finden, da oben zu stehen und das zu sehen in seiner ganzen Pracht, das war schon ziemlich, ziemlich genial. Also this time, they want to give something back to the Shimshali. They put together the first rock climbing routes for the kids in this region and teach them how to climb. Das Kinderlachen, was man gesehen hat, wie sie die ersten Routen geklettert sind, wenn man einer erklärt, ja, du musst so steigen und das sind schon schöne Momente. Und wenn man das alles in so einer Kulisse machen kann, dann, dann bleibt das einfach im, im Kopf hängen. Das Erste, wenn man bei Pakistan hört, äh, denken viele Leute einfach an, an negative Sachen. Und von dem her muss man sich einfach selber davon überzeugen, wie das Land wirklich ist und einfach den Schritt wagen und in das Land reisen. 
So leid wie mir, die was gerne in die Berge sind, ist das sowieso ein, ein Traumland. Let's get an adventure is coming to an end. But only for this year.